Fear is a perfectly normal reaction as humans. Fear is common, particularly when we perceive a threat to our safety or even in times that we may feel as if we will be abandoned or somehow harmed or experience a loss. But it is not God's will that you live in fear. In this episode of the Midweek Refill, we're continuing our series on the book of Esther entitled For Such a Time as This. Our subject for this week is Overcoming Fear and Doubt. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. Stay tuned. Welcome back, friends, to this transformative journey as we continue in the book of Esther, as we learn about confronting fear and doubt with unwavering faith. Please do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and let someone know that the midweek refill is on the air. Don't forget also that down in the description box below is a free PDF handout that goes into much more detail for this week's teaching. And I want you to avail yourself to it. Go down there and click that link and be sure to share it with a friend, with a loved one, someone around the world or even across the other part of the country or the county you live in. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Midweek Refill. This week, we are embarking on a profound exploration into the depths of our own souls, seeking to understand the impact of these adversaries on our walk with the Almighty God. And these adversaries of which I speak are doubt and fear. Well, we will learn through faith that we can emerge victoriously through anything that brings doubt and fear in our lives. Fear and doubt, like looming shadows over our head, can cast a veil over our hearts, causing us to question the very promises that God has spoken over our lives. Fear and doubt can plant seeds of uncertainty, threatening to literally choke the blossoms of our faith. But fear not, for as we immerse ourselves in this sacred text this week, we'll uncover some timeless truths that faith is the elixir we need to dispel the darkness of doubt and fear in our lives. We should confront the reality of how fear and doubt hinder our communion with God. So I want you to take a moment, friends, to ponder how these adversaries have manifested in your own journey, hindering your trust and willingness to step boldly in faith. Esther, a remarkable woman, handpicked for such a time as this, encountered her own moments of uncertainty and trepidation. When Mordecai implored her to step forward and advocate for her people, she hesitated at first feeling the weight and responsibility of the possible repercussions that could come her way. And this reaction that Esther has resonates deeply within all of us, for we too face similar situations that stir up our own anxieties and uncertainties from time to time in our own everyday lives. And these feelings and emotions can stir up such terrible feelings of fear, anxiety, and even doubt within us as we try to navigate through the different situations in our lives that can place us in a point of trepidation as well. Let's take a look at Esther chapter 4 and verse number 11 to really get a good glimpse of what it was that Esther was going through. And it reads like this. 
all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. Now, friends, in Esther 4 and 11, we witness Esther's initial response to Mordecai's plea, revealing her apprehension. And, of course, the common inclination to pause when confronted with challenging situations or significant risk. This verse really does unveil the raw emotions that were swirling within Esther as she faces a daunting and very perilous mission. It mirrors the genuine human emotions and experiences of fear and hesitation when we are challenged or confronted with what appears to be overwhelming challenges. Esther's initial reaction really does echo the feelings of many of us. Because when we find ourselves encountered and encumbered by our own challenges in our journey, serving as a reminder that moments of uncertainty and fear are a part of our own shared experiences, we too might react the same way when we find ourselves facing these types of challenges. But when it comes to doubt and fear, it is important that we always refer and reflect on the Word of God for our lives. I want you to see what Paul shared with young Pastor Timothy, who Paul had now given birth to and placed in the ministry. And listen to the words of 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 7. There, Paul says, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Again, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 really does shine forth as a guiding light of divine truth. It reminds us that fear is not birthed by God. And this sacred verse uplifts and emboldens us because it declares to us that we are imbued with power, with love, and a clear mind. So it beckons us to embrace bravery and to cast aside paralyzing grip of fear, laying a firm foundation for us to overcome the uncertainties and the hesitations that often can attack our faith and our level of determination. You know, those scriptures converge to really weave a coherent narrative that speaks directly to the depths of the human soul. These verses bridge together to create a succinct response to fear and to doubt and the unwavering certainties of God's provision and empowerment. What we should see, family, is that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Esther 4 and 11 poignantly depicts the authentic human struggle, encapsulating the core of our own vulnerabilities and uncertainties. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 presents for us a powerful viewpoint because it reminds us of the divine attributes residing within every one of us 
and our own inherent ability to soar above fear through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And family, these sacred texts not only acknowledge the legitimacy of our fears and doubts, but they also illuminate a pathway to transcend all of our fears and all of our doubts. They underscore the fact that while fear may arise naturally, it should never dictate our actions or impede our journey of faith. Instead, they beckon us to embrace the power, the love, and the clarity of mind that is bestowed on us by Jesus Christ, empowering us to confront every single fear with an unwavering courage and steadfast confidence. Now, in the pages of Esther's story, we encounter a profound dialogue between Mordecai and Esther. It echoes some eternal truths about faith, bravery, and the constant companionship of God in the very face of challenges in our lives. So let's delve into the significance in this moment, delving into the pertinent Verses of Esther 4, verse 13 and 14, and Isaiah chapter 41 and verse number 10. And we want to really ponder how they converge and merge to shed light on our current journey. Let's look at Esther chapter 4, verse 13 and verse 14. It reads like this. He sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish, and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. And what a powerful reminder that is, that God wants to use each of us in very special ways, and that God has caused us to be where we are for such a time as this. And in Esther chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, Mordecai earnestly urges Esther, seize the moment and step into your divine predestined role at this critical point in their nation's history. His words serve as a stirring reminder of the profound impact our choices can have, as well as the indispensable role that faith plays in navigating through times of uncertainty. Esther is presented with a pivotal decision to yield to fear or to embrace her divine purpose with boldness and trust. And friends, this mirrors our own encounters with the daunting obstacles that demand steadfast resilience on God's divine provision for our lives in every single crisis. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 41 and verse number 10 and see the great hope that Isaiah gives us in times of fear, in times of doubt, in times of disbelief. And there we find these mighty words in Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
What a powerful, comforting word from Isaiah 41 and 10 that serves as a steadfast anchor for believers navigating our way through the storms of life, which are often storms of fear, storms of doubt. This verse encapsulates God's promise to uphold and to fortify us and to always be unwavering in his companionship, even in the most trying times. Isaiah 41.10 really embodies the very essence of divine comfort, divine empowerment. It infuses us with courage to soar above our fears and to maintain an unshakable faith. Esther 4 13 and 14 and Isaiah 41 and 10 really do intertwine beautifully, don't they? They weave a tapestry of resilience, unwavering faith. Mordecai's challenge to Esther literally echoes profound sentiments from Isaiah 41 and 10, highlighting the transformative strength that is found in conquering fear through faith faith in God. And these sacred scriptures intersect to underscore a profound truth. That's this. In the midst of our struggles, we are still beckoned by God to acknowledge his unwavering presence and to draw strength from his presence. These verses remind us that faith surpasses the grip of fear and doubt empowering us to tread boldly along the path that is laid before us. Family, I'm telling you, if you will trust God, God will empower you and equip you with everything you need to succeed. Let me say that once again. If you will simply trust God, our God is able, willing, accessible, available, and interested in empowering and equipping you with everything you need to succeed on this journey. God has placed you where you are for you to be a tool in his arsenal and a pivotal, useful vessel for his glory. Well, friends, I truly pray that you enjoyed this week's episode of our series on the book of Esther. Again, I want to encourage you to go down to the description box below, the description box right down there, and click on the link and access the free PDF that goes with this session. You can also go back through the videos prior to this and get those handouts as well, and then you'll have the complete set at your fingertips. I promise you, it goes into great detail providing you with lots of reflection questions to help you take a deeper dive into the scriptures. As always, it is my great joy to share God's word with you. This is Bishop Littman. You've been watching the Midweek Refill. And until next week, you go with God. Don't forget, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Love to read your comments. May God continuously bless you.